What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. As you can see there is movement in the cryo chambers. So far so good. Just a bit of piping that needs to be resolved and we have established now that all of the research for the cryo engine oxidizers, the last, very last research in the actual research tree, not to be completed but it's the, 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 the last one the highest level one the most difficult one everything is done apart from once again the rad bolt discovery so i need to increase the rad bolts dramatically there now in these pipes you will see there is the cryogenic liquid already in there the super coolant is in them pipes going round. they then go around the loop into each of the coolers and then along, as long as the temperature gauges there, the in-pipe temperature gauges there are saying that it's okay, um, it will then be passed around. So what I actually need to establish now, once we've got the gases in there, it is going to need tweaking. There's no way I'm going to be able to d do it first try, right? Because although if I set it to negative 200 and exactly the, the number that, that it needs to be at, it will break because it will get colder than that because you've got to remember the the actual temperature drops by 30 degrees each time so we need to find a middle ground now for the very start the easiest thing to do was steal the hydrogen from that chamber that gas vents the free hydrogen so that's going to get pumped into that room now you can see immediately the thermostat has kicked in because that heat from the hydrogen is going to warm up the super coolant and that needs to be then cooled again so until the gases in the room and the super coolant start getting down to silly negatives we won't actually see anything happening of course immediately we're getting there was clearly oxygen trapped in that room and liquid oxygen has already been created so we know now that this room is starting to hit negative 180 but we don't actually want any oxygen in that room because that room is for hydrogen but the easiest solution is leave it alone and in a bit you will see that the room will get so cold because it's going to negative 250 plus minus whatever the actual liquid oxygen will freeze just like that it's good timing so now the liquid height sorry the liquid oxygen that was trapped in that room is so cold it's turning into a solid that means we can just get our guys now to go and pick that up and move it into the other room leaving only hydrogen trapped in that room and at some point that should start to get turned into liquid as well a lot of energy is required for cryogenics it's fact getting down to kelvin is something that i'm not sure if we can actually do i'm pretty sure absolute zero is impossible to reach um physically at this moment in time in 2024 if you're watching this in 2080 though uh, yeah you, you might have figured it out by then so oxygen now coming in on the other chamber now this will obviously freeze a lot quicker because the temperatures are much the required are much warmer than the chamber that we're used to but we know we can do it already it's just a case of setting the thermostat at a stable enough number that it doesn't get the room it's too cold that the oxygen is turned into a solid like it did in the right room um, in the left hand room we want it to only do liquid. Now I did miss a step, uh, a quite important step, and that is at the bottom where the liquid is going to start to generate. I don't have a pump, and if I do put a pump in there, it will be in the way of that cooling pipe. So I am going to have to push the bottom of these chambers down. One tile I think is enough to get a pump in there which means the power cable and that transport tube below likely will need to be moved as well unless i can scrape around it but the biggest reason i'm mentioning this is because as soon as i start building with new items in there i'm going to introduce a lot of heat so the pump itself the material i use will be 30 40 50 degrees whatever that's going to have to cool down as well um the the actual tiles that I'm going to put in for any reason will also need to be pulled down. So it is a process and I'm sure there are better ways of doing this. I've had comments mentioned about calling down one tile, which yes would be easier, would work. 
you put the gas in one tile and pull that one tile down and when it's a liquid you can obviously pump it out of there. But I like this idea, I like to visually see a whole room, a cryo chamber uh, as a room and you can actually see the gases and we will see it, it does work, don't worry. Um, and it's fascinating actually to see that when it's got to that peak moment where it then sublimates, is that the right way around? No. Condensation. Anyway, when it turns from the gas into the liquid, um, the slightest bit of temperature differential from the fluid in the pipe immediately turns into a gas again. So you actually see the room bubbling while it settles itself down. Leaving it in the room though is a bad idea. You want to try and get it out as soon as possible into a pump, into the pipes and into a storage vessel. There you can see now the gas, the oxygen is condensed into a liquid but then immediately going above that limitation of the temperature and then turning into a gas again. But suffice to say that room has got very, very cold oxygen in it at the moment. A bit later on and you can see it's starting to work now. So not the hydrogen room, that's going to take a bit more time and a bit more channeling. You can actually see the thermometers have turned off. So the hydrogen room, although there's no liquid there, it thinks it's cold enough. So that's what I meant by I'm going to need to tweak it. Also with the oxygen room, you can see that there is oxygen, liquid oxygen down there in the bottom. But it's not condensing enough, quick enough. What should actually happen is you should end up with a pool of liquid at the bottom, which is your liquid hydrogen or oxygen, and a vacuum. Or at least a vacuum on the basis that you turn off the gases. Now, at the minute, I've got all of the gases you're pumping in permanently. And that will work, but you want to stop them at some point, because if you're constantly putting in warmer air, you're never going to be able to get to them ridiculous cryo temperatures. So it's best to actually stop it, hold off, and let it turn into a liquid get rid of that liquid and then of course pump in new fresh gases to be cooled down clearly there you saw below as well below that chamber that is the cooling loop for this it's much longer now um, to try and help mitigate the heat that is being pushed out from those coolers not so much on the oxygen side that side is comfortable stable the issue is the side of the hydrogen, of course. Getting hydrogen into a cryofuel is producing a ridiculous amount of heat. And that heat needs to be sent elsewhere. As you can see, I'm deleting the liquid chamber off the chlorine rocket already. Yes, because we did get 20, 30,000 litres of liquid chlorine anyway. We've already got liquid oxygen being produced. I am not going to now bother wasting my time with liquid oxygen anymore. And if I am, I've already got it stored. Um, but there's no there's no way we're going to use all of that and need to go back to the planet and get more. So this Chlorine 1 rocket that is... Uh, was set up to go back, never needs to. So even more liquid oxygen being produced. I think we've nailed that one. Time is the only issue now, just waiting on that to happen. And again, if you're pumping in fresh, as you can see at the top, the high pressure vent is allowing uh, up to 20 kilograms per tile of a gas to be in there. It is working, but it, it could be better. Obviously the hydrogen, you can see the actual hydrogen vents that I'm stealing the hydrogen from are basically empty now so I am going to have to hook into my hydrogen storage to get a decent amount because although there is 20 kilos or so of hydrogen in this room when that condenses to a liquid it would be really nothing certainly not enough to fill a fuel tank on a rocket switching out the interplanetary transporter there for the research station to use all of that Oh, sorry, all of those rad bolts for research to said to really push the cryogenics over. We now finally have liquid hydrogen. And you can see that small little speck of hydrogen at the bottom of there was all of that that was compressed into that room. So a perfect example of how the gas really does compress down to a liquid. And it is basically split it on the floor at this stage. We need a lot more than that. 
So we do have the gas being stole for the hydrogen from uh, the oxygen cell. And for now, it's enough um, that, for what we need. But I am going to have to wire in or pipe in a pipe to get the hydrogen over here now. And I didn't think it through. Obviously, I put the setup near the rockets because it makes the most sense. But the gases are stored on the opposite side of the map. Maybe next time I should have the gases, gas storage low down on the side of the rockets along with the, the the bit in between and then the rockets on the top and i probably will but for now you can see actually the oxygen in terms of the atmosphere suits is poor and the oxygen going to the rockets is poor why is that it's simple really it's because you can see it's all looking like it's not working it is but the hydrogen is backed up so what's happened is all of the electrolysis rooms have got hydrogen at the top. They've tried to pump it out. You can see there, that means that the gas has press, pressed the oxygen down. The hydrogen has got nowhere to go because all of my hydrogen tanks are full. Basically, the exhaust is backed up, which means all of the electrolysis rooms are failing and everything is struggling on the same basis. Now, the first thing I need to fix is getting that oxygen back into the base. The Atmo suits can wait. If there's no oxygen in them, they won't use them. They'll stay in the base. The base, we need to push oxygen back in. And to do so, we need to find a place for the hydrogen to go or even chuck in more storage tanks. As an emergency, I would suggest to make it so you know you've got the room to do it. Select one of your hydrogen tanks and just destroy it. The five thousand kilos of gas that's in there will immediately be let out. Yes. Um, but then just build it again and it will give somewhere for the gases to go. Obviously my setup that would work because any gases that I release where they are currently is not actually in the base so it doesn't matter. It won't hurt anybody, it just means pumping it up again if you can be bothered. There is some hydrogen as you can see getting into the cryo lab and you can see there's a lot of oxygen now, liquid oxygen. Really good, that is very good for us. I'm not worried about the hydrogen getting in there, and that is because of the backup that I mentioned. So it's because the electrolysis rooms are failing, struggling, that that's happened. But the oxygen room is not going to get anywhere near cold enough for that hydrogen to gas into a liquid. So all we're going to do is have liquid oxygen in there with a bit of hydrogen gas. And to be honest, the hydrogen gas being in there will help transmit the cold around that chamber. So if anything, it's going to do us a favour. It's a minimal amount anyway. Now I am putting in some tanks on the surface in the vacuum that are for the, well, one is for liquid hydrogen and one is for liquid oxygen so that they get stored here. I've seen from the, the liquid chlorine that is negative 44.6, I think. Uh, it hasn't changed in many, many cycles, so it does seem to be working in the vacuum as I hopefully intended. This is working with a crap ton of rad bolts now at its disposal. You can see that is pushing that research up quite nicely. I would expect in another cycle, maybe two, uh, we will have finished that research. At that point, the only research that is left is nice to have stuff that I'm not interested in. One of them is the diamond press to make diamonds from coal. I don't need that. We've got more diamond than we'll ever need because we had the diamond hatchings. Uh, we had about 30 of them at one point, so yeah, we've got plenty of diamond. The other ones are stuff like the monument and the some of the a couple of automations for star travel, starlight travel that I'm not going to be using. Um, and again, the monument, which is another way of completing the game that I'm not going to be doing either in this series. So I could build the monument as a just a YOLO swag goal, but. I don't actually have anywhere in my base to put it. It is ginormous, and yeah, we, we, we're all right. Now, you can see another relic there has been cleaned. That means that the black neutronium stuff that goes around it has been taken off and has gone into storage. It didn't show as new. I don't know why. Normally, you would have on the side where it says new resource. You can see one there, actually. Actually, it is there. It's literally there right now, as I'm saying it, neutronium dust. I didn't see that. So I'm an idiot. Apologies. But yeah, it did work. It wasn't broken. It's me just being blind, apparently. 
Now the hydrogen is still struggling a little bit. It's not because it's not working, it's because I've not set it cold enough. Now what I've done is instead of... Basically I've just cut out two of the coolers. The one cooler there that you can see is activated now is running and then it goes into a bridge and skips the other two. So I can fine tune it to get colder and colder and colder but it's, it's in 10 degree intervals instead of 30 because of course the last thing I want to do is freeze the super cooler. You can see there on the left hand side what I mentioned about the liquid oxygen bubbling. When some of the super coolant goes through there that is too warm, likely because I added a bit more, um, it basically turns the liquid oxygen instantly, you can see it's happening there a lot, it insta boils, turns it back to a gas and then it very quickly turns back to a liquid. It will settle, it's always going to happen when you start. But once you've got the room down to cryo temperatures, it should be quite stable. It only happens when you add in new lubricant. And of course, it's not lubricant. It's cooler. But, yeah. So add in any more in there. Well, look, the actual super coolant is about 22 degrees, I think, when it's made. And of course, 22 degrees for something that needs to be negative. 180 is, inst is going to insta-boil it. Um, and then on the right hand side you can see a bit of condensation forming we're close we're very close to having both of them up and running nicely i think and we're even closer now you can see i've jumped ahead for two reasons one is i had to build out the bottom as i said i would um, and in doing so basically reset everything it all turned back into gas 65 kilos of gas per tile so that shows you the difference between a gas and a liquid that tiny bit of liquid when it turns back into a gas is insane the pressures that it does incorporate now i have added these and you can see the loader for the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen are on the left hand side now because i didn't want them traveling these rockets now i believe the, the actual storage there is not liquid hydrogen at the minute um, it is liquid oxidizer though. So you can see all three of those are filling up. All three of those are set to scan the final edges of the solar system. All three of them will be sent out shortly and with two RTGs per. They have the power, they have a relic storage, they have two canisters of fuel and one liquid oxidizer which should make them now as efficient as they can be for traveling. Of course, the fuel, not being liquid hydrogen, uh, still gets the same distance, but it's just not as fast. Now, making sure that all of these living quarters are good. They have water, they have oxygen, and the room itself is full. I think one of them wasn't... Yeah, there you go. One of them has been used a few times, and you can see now it's gassed up with carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide will mean that that... Obviously, it was a chlorine ship as well, because you can see where the chlorine's burst inside. It's now got chlorine gas inside. We do need to get the pump in, though, and I'll have to re-poke around with those pipes to make it fit in order to allow it to pump out that carbon dioxide. Until that's gone, this ship can't go anywhere because that bed is useless. And I'm not having them suffer. I'm not rushing it that much. We are near the end now, but... Unless there is some life and death situations happening in the future, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, subscribe for more. Um, I'm trying not to kill my duplicates, right? It's the idea, anyway. I mean, it's a survival game, after all. You can put them upside down to make it easier, but it pumps from the base, so turning it upside down means that it will be pumping from two tiles up. You don't actually want that. You want it pumping as low as possible because that's where the carbon dioxide resides. So then you would just need a pipe on the outside to allow it to off gas. You can see there I'm setting the destinations. One and two is good to go. Three needs more work doing as you've just seen. So we can get one and two sent to various destinations. Making sure only one duplicate per. The question marks are what we're after. There what we're looking to turn into something else. A question mark is unknown. One of them has to be the temporal tear. Um, it might be the ones in the north, but I, I don't know. And For me, I've only ever seen the temporal tier appear at the lower part of the map. 
but it could be 100% random and you could have people with it at the top of the map. For me, I've never seen it, though I have only seen it two or three times. Now, that rocket did not take off and immediately land. There was a rocket in orbit waiting to land, and that is the one that's come back with the full reen, as I mentioned, um, and that now is all being picked up. You can see sedimentary rock, many other things, regolith is already being picked up. Even though I set the cargo container to only be fullerene, it collected everything. Now a small tip, just as the second rocket goes off to explore for us finally as well. I always delete the rocket when I finish with it because I don't need it anymore. I would suggest deleting everything but the capsule. If your capsule is already built, it is significantly quicker to leave it there and build the new rocket around it as opposed to deleting it and starting from scratch. Trust me, I've wasted a lot of time building those sodding things only to then rebuild them again because I'm changing the rocket every two minutes. Now, this is always saying that it can't be used because of reasons. It turns out on this basis, it is very, very mardy. The ladders are the problem here. The sodding ladders. Seriously. So you're in this room, planning where a rocket's going to go so it can go faster. And the ladders mean that you can't do something. As you saw, as soon as the ladders went, it reactivated. That means now that the ships should fly 20% faster. Um, it does bug a little bit, but yeah, it, it, it's working now. So that's great. 20% faster is significant, especially when you fly into the edge of the galaxy. 20% um, faster. I mean, it's about a six or seven day flight. Uh, maybe four or five for a hydrogen engine. But yeah, six or seven cycles. So, I mean, 20% of that is almost a full cycle, right? Or, or Well, actually, it's more than. So, it, it's yeah, it's quantifiable and worth it just for that tiny building being built. Nothing else. It's quite a simple setup. So, I would imagine that everybody uses that, right? Travelling away, and look at that. One more research should finish the cryogenics for us, which would be fantastic. You can see these three there. They were four, sorry. Um, I've set them to go just in case I have enough to do it. If I can finish it, I can. If I don't have enough data disks, which, spoiler, I don't, um, I am not going to get any more because I'm not interested. Liquid hydrogen is now produced as expected, and the liquid oxygen is good to go. The switches there on the right hand side are colour coded so I know. The top set of switches is the vents to allow more gas in or out and the bottom switches are to turn on the pumps. Simple as that. Uh, and as you can see I have too much super coolant. It's overflowing so I need to fix that. But we are at time now so I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video please click like and any comments are welcome. As always don't forget to subscribe to so you don't miss out and like if you like. Take care. Goodbye.